Okay, I've done some pretty long videos exploring uh, ChatGPT, what it can do for data analysis, things like that. This is gonna be a pretty short one. Three reasons your custom GPT is not working and how to fix them. So I've become a bit obsessed over just the last couple of weeks uh, with custom GPTs, this idea that you can kind of create your own little version of ChatGPT that does a specific task. Uh, and in particular, because I'm a teacher, I've been experimenting with, can I make a GPT tutor? Can I upload my course materials to ChatGPT, tell ChatGPT um, that I want them to answer students' questions based on what I teach in class? Um, a lot of you might be in a similar situation with your GPTs. Maybe you're not a teacher. Maybe you're trying to upload a bunch of company policies to a GPT. So if people have questions about company policies, they can get them answered. Um, maybe you're uploading a bunch of style guides um, to GPT so that when you're getting it to write reports, it's following particular styles or conventions of your organization or, or your profession. Um, so typically what you're doing in these situations is you're giving ChatGPT specific content that you then want it to reference when it's responding to things. And, and crucially, you're often wanting it to refer more or even exclusively to the content you've uploaded and not to its general knowledge base of everything that it's ever learned uh, and been trained on. Uh, and I've come across three things that seem to sort of get in the way of that working properly, um, and at least initially, ways to fix those three things. I'm gonna have a lot more to say about custom GPTs in the months to come as I play around with this a little bit more, but I wanted to share these three discoveries with you now. So the first thing is, how many files can you upload to a custom GPT? So I couldn't actually find any official documentation on this. Um, I saw a few Reddit threads and, and community forums that people said you can only upload 20 files, but I didn't actually see anything that said that was the case. So I started uploading my individual handouts uh, from my course to ChatGPT. There's about 30 of them. Each one covers a different topic. It seemed to me like it was probably better to give uh, ChatGPT those individually. Um, and then I got to the point where I went to go upload uh, another one of my handouts. And I said, you know, uploaded the thing here and just said, you know, please add this handout to your knowledge base. And I get this little error saving draft but then I get a response from ChatGPT that says this new handout has been successfully added to the knowledge base, even kind of summarizes, you know, what's co covered in that handout. Great. But then I would test out um, ChatGPT and I would uh, ask it a question about that handout and it seemed to not know anything about that handout. It still knew everything about all the handouts I'd uploaded before that one, but that one seemed to have not kind of registered. So I tried again and it wouldn't work. And I tried again and it wouldn't work. Uh, and the key thing here, and if you try to upload this, update this uh, ChatGPT, you'll see it again, is this error saving draft. This is not great UI. I wish ChatGPT didn't do it this way. I wish ChatGPT would just tell me you've reached the maximum number of files you can upload to a custom GPT. <laughs> this magically happened on handout number 21, but it didn't. Instead, it just said error saving draft. When you see error saving draft, it means you've hit that maximum and it does indeed appear to be uh, 20 files. So that means uh, what you may have to do is try to find a way of combining multiple smaller files into a bigger file, into a big Word document, uh, into a um, big PDF because 20 files is the maximum, but the only way you're gonna know that is when you see that error and it's not gonna become part of your custom GPT. So the second thing uh, I've run into as a major problem with making custom GPTs and that you might not notice at first is that when you're building the ChatGPT, you're actually using ChatGPT to build your own custom GPT and it's not programming or anything like that. You're just having a conversation. So you maybe upload uh, some files that you wanted to use. You tell it how you want to use it. You sort of give it some instructions like, please, you know, reference the handouts when giving an answer, including the titles. And you'll see here that, you know, it's saying, got it. I'll make sure I reference the handouts and titles when answering your questions. Feel free to ask and I'll pull in the relevant information. And then you might find that it's not doing uh, what you told it to, right? Like you just said, great, I'll do that. But then it doesn't actually do it. Um, and what, what's missing here, and you didn't, you'll notice it here, um, is it's not updating the GPT. So, so when it's actually updating the behavior of the GPT, you'll see this little, um, kind of wrench icon going grr, 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 and sort of making sure that it changes the behavior of the GPT. And for some reason, I don't know if it's a glitch or whatever, uh, very often when I'm giving it multiple instructions, I'll just sort of notice you're not actually updating. Um, and I don't know why that happens. Sometimes getting out of it, going back in, it'll do it again. But, but I've also found sometimes I can just sort of say, did you update the GPT? <laughs> um, and then you'll get the little, little icon updating the GPT. And until that happens, 
whatever instructions you've given, whether it's use this tone, uh, reference these files, make sure you start every answer with the following text, make sure you end every answer with the following text, uh, will not actually register. I don't know why that happens, but it seems to happen with some regularity, especially when you're constantly kind of trying to refine and tweak um, your GPT. So look for that gear icon. Uh, if you don't say it, tell GPT, hey, update the GPT, you'll see the gear icon, and then the behavior uh, should be registered in the GPT instructions. Okay, I've saved the best or worst, depending on your perspective, for last. Um, often when you're building a, a custom GPT, and certainly it's the case for me where I'm, where I'm trying to build a GPT that is based on hundreds of pages of class materials, I want ChatGPT to reference those course materials. Uh, that's the whole point. Um, if it's not going to give any answers that are different than what regular old plain vanilla chat GPT would provide, what, what's the point of having uh, a custom GPT? But um, the problem I often have, and, and from going through discussion threads and Reddit threads, it seems to be the problem that a lot of people have, is that you spend all this time giving chat GPT all this custom content, and then the custom GPT kind of ignores it. So I teach a class on data visualization. Um, I could ask a question like, are pie charts a good visualization to use? Okay, and it gives this answer. Pie charts are generally not recommended for data visualization. According to the data visualization handout, they're considered one of the most problematic chart types. N not a bad answer, um, but it, it, it seems like it could be just sort of a generic answer, and it's sort of just referring to data visualization handout, which seems a little bit vague. I'm going to try something else that's maybe a little bit more specific, like what's the best way to download data from Statistics Canada? This is something specifically I talk about in my class. The handouts I just uploaded have page after page of the specific steps. Let's see how it does. Okay, what you saw there is very, very briefly, it came up searching my knowledge. Okay, um, and what it's done here is it's given a, a proper, pretty good response based on what is in the handouts. But what you'll see is that very often um, when you ask your custom GPT a question, that little searching my knowledge will not come up. And, and that searching my knowledge as best as I can tell is doing a live on the fly search of the materials that you have, you have uploaded. And if it's not doing that, very often the responses that you get uh, will be generic responses, almost identical to what you would get in a regular ChatGPT, not in any way referencing the files that you've uploaded, which is obviously a problem if the point is I want this to kind of almost be like a tutor for my class and the way that I teach these concepts. Or, you know, if you've uploaded your employee handbook and you want the answers to be about what we do at our organization, not you know, what we do generally in organizations. And you can often test this out by asking sort of more generic questions where I think ChatGPT is more likely uh, to go to its general knowledge base. So let's try something like, what are the best types of charts to use? Okay, and you'll see there it didn't say, right, search my knowledge. Um, so it's giving me some generic information about maps and line charts. And this is the real dead giveaway for me. Scatter plots. Um, I I don't recommend scatter plots to my students. Like it's it's not um, a, a visualization type I generally recommend. So this is kind of the tell for me that oh, okay, this isn't my advice. This is your generic uh, advice. So this is one of the biggest problems that I've had with ChatGPT. Um, I could show you uh, long chat threads where, where I'm basically berating ChatGPT. I'm like over and over and over again saying in here, please make sure that your answers are related to um, what I have in the content. Please do this. And, and the more I do that, the closer it gets, but it still didn't do it really, really well. What I found worked the best, um, and it's a bit of a hacky solution, um, is to kind of trick uh, ChatGPT into searching the knowledge base on every question. So how do we do that? Um, I put in a prompt like this. I said, imagine that every request you get is prefaced with the phrase, search your knowledge base for. Okay, and it's saying it's gonna do that, but again, you may have noticed, right? It didn't actually update the GPT. Let's make sure it's doing that. You know, did you update the GPT? <laughs> 
Okay, and now I'm going to ask it a question uh, that is pretty generic, but has a pretty specific answer in my course materials. I give people, students a handout on why it is we visualize data, but you can imagine getting a very generic answer to that as well. So I say, why do we visualize data? Right, and we get these questions about humans are better inter at interpreting colors, shapes, and patterns than raw numbers. Uh, data overload, we're overwhelmed with data, and then uh, interactive tools. And crucially, uh, it's, it cites the two tools that I teach in my class, which are Tableau and Data Wrapper. So it's not talking generically about Excel or Canva or things like that. It's talking about um, the specific reasons uh, that I talk about in my handouts. Um, and, you'll, and sometimes when it searches the knowledge base, it's going to come up so quickly that you're actually going to miss it. So, so just because you don't see it doesn't mean it didn't happen. It's more the, the responses. And, and you'll sort of learn as you go along, you know, the types of questions that you can ask as sort of a test run. And then the other thing I'll do, and this is a total kludgy hack, but, you know, it's the best I've come up with so far, is to add another uh, kind of explicit instruction that says, at the end of every response, please write, if you don't see searching knowledge before my response, please remind me to search my knowledge base. Sometimes I forget, and when I do, my answers aren't as good. This is not an elegant solution, <laughs> but if my students um, are using this to try to learn about the class, I don't want them to get generic answers. I want them to get answers that are rooted in uh, the course materials. Um, this is important in my class, which is on data visualization. It would be extremely important if, you know, as someone was teaching criminology or law and they want Canadian, British Columbia law in the responses and they're getting, you know, stuff about, you know, U.S. jurisprudence and stuff like that. And, and I can imagine a lot of other situations where it's really important that the, the responses that are being given are anchored in the course materials or the, the uploaded materials that you've provided. So this sort of does two things. One says, just assume everything I'm asking you starts with search your knowledge base for. Um, the other one is basically sort of for the user to sort of see this reminder like, oh, I didn't actually see that search my knowledge base and this answer isn't really, really great. I'm just gonna, gonna do that. And, and what I've found is asking ChatGPT to preface every question with search your knowledge base for seems to make it much more reliable at, at actually searching the knowledge base every time it asks a question. Uh, and then in times when I've been playing around with it when it doesn't and it doesn't do it all the time, um, I'll get that little reminder. And if I say, did you search your knowledge base? It'll go, oh, no, no, I didn't. I'll do that now. And then I do get the response that I want. Um, a lot of this stuff is trial and error. The The interface is, is weird. I, I often find, you know, if I tell ChatGPT to do something once, it won't do it. If I ask it three or four times, eventually it starts to get it. It seems like the more time I spend on um, kind of tweaking things and stuff like that, it starts to get the idea better. It, it's, a, it's a very odd um, interface. Uh, as I say, I'm, I'm working on um, these custom GPT projects over the next few months. I'm going to have a lot more things to post. I've been sort of experimenting with what's the best file format for uploading things. You know, when you have a really, really big file, how do you help ChatGPT navigate that content in a way that's productive? So I'll have a lot more to share uh, in the months to come. Uh, I'll post it uh, on this channel. I'll post it on this playlist. Um, if you come across anything with custom GPTs um, that you found works really, really well, please do post it in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Um, and I'll look forward to exploring more of this with you in the future. But those are the three things to really watch out for. Watch out for that error message when you've uploaded too many files. Make sure that it actually is updating the GPT every time. Sometimes it says it is, but it's not. And then really sort of tweaking the instructions so that you're making sure that it is actually searching your knowledge base, if that's what you want your ChatGPT to do. If your ChatGPT, custom GPT, is meant to kind of access a specific set of knowledge each and every time, you know, telling ChatGPT to do that and then maybe even adding some sort of boilerplate uh, thing to every response, telling your user, hey, make sure I did that. <laughs> so hopefully this has been helpful. I look forward to hearing how you've been using custom GPTs and I'll be uh, posting lots more in the months to come.